Welcome to Feature Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm Director of Product Marketing for our cloud providers in VMware. And today I'm joined by Rowan. Uh, welcome, Rowan. Your first time on Feature Fridays. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Rohan Bukesh. I'm based out of Dallas, Texas, Senior Staff Solutions Architect, part of Tanzu Routes to Market team. I help cloud providers in their journey of Kubernetes adoption. Excellent. And that's what we're going to do today. Help cloud providers understand more about container service extension and you know, specifically dive into the CAP VCD architecture that um, I think it came along in CSE 4.0. Is that right? It was completely yes. redesigned. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's dive into it, Ron. I know you've got some slides to work through, so let's uh, have a little look. Sounds good. Let me share my screen. So I'm here to talk about self-managing clusters. So the reason why I say self-managing clusters is because CSE 4, as it has, as you know, uh, that it has been re-architected. So very interesting concept is self-managing clusters and the way CSE 4 brings self-managing clusters to the providers and the tenants is by using CAP VCD on some of the cluster components. So before I deep dive into cluster components, let's do a quick recap of CSE 4. Mm -hmm. Um, so what is container service extension? It is a VCD extension, which the providers can use to provide Kubernetes as a service to the tenants. And using this, it can be easily deployed as virtual appliances. The TKG versions can be easily managed with TKG images. Mm -hmm. Now, from the tenant point of view, what it brings is the capability to create self-service Kubernetes clusters and the capability to lifecycle manage the Kubernetes clusters by themselves. So which means the upgrade and resize of the Kubernetes clusters can be done by them without any provider help. And from the developer's point of view, what they get is a, a, a fully provisioned TKG cluster so that they can start developing apps and deploying apps on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, got it. And those apps, just uh, an FYI for providers watching, obviously those apps can be deployed manually, but they can also be deployed using the app launch pad, which is another extension for Cloud Director, which can um, support Helm charts and private repositories. So exactly. yeah, you can really um, I provide provide the guard rails that you want your developers to have um, yes. in terms of the packages they use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. just, uh, Ron, just, just so people can understand, uh, TKG is uh, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. And mm -hmm. just in a very short sentence, what is the advantage of using Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, grid over native Kubernetes for a, a tenant or a developer? I mean, the the advantage of TKG is that TKG has some of the... So first of all, TKG uses cluster API. And underneath, which is a six project, and it allows you to manage the clusters easily. That's one. And the second is that TKG has a lot of uh, already the, the the different components in TKG that you require today. That you will have to do a lot of manual work, and you all of that orchestration is inbuilt in TKG today itself. So TKG at the same time also provides the user managed packages that can be deployed in the cluster, uh, so that you can do Fluent Bit integration, you can do Harbor integration, or you can do Prometheus and Grafana. So those observability also come as a part of the TKG. So TK, I, I will show you in one of the slides that what are the different components TKG brings into the table, so which is really beneficial for the cloud providers. Okay. And so, yeah, so basically your tenants can then really kind of jumpstart their development without having to deploy all these things manually and then manage the version control on them and manage the configuration for them. It's all done kind of out of the box, ready to rock and roll. Here's your, yes. here's your Kubernetes compliant cluster. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on, um, now we now uh, we know about CSE4. What are some of the components in CSE4? There, so there are two components. One is the CSE server appliance, which is based on the Photon OS. It runs as a daemon, and it can be configured so that we can run it concurrently 
and can be configured into multiple V apps so that we can make it highly available and it runs concurrently. Then the CSE server actually helps in creation and deletion of the Kubernetes cluster while allowing the TKG cluster to be self-managed by the tenants. Uh, there are a couple of new features which has been introduced. One is the global proxy configuration and the syslog forwarding. What it means is that for the for the tenants, they get the ability to configure a particular location in the VM so that they can forward the syslogs to a particular location now. So mm -hmm. that's CSE server appliance for the provider point of view. And really the second component is the CSE UI plugin, wherein the, the tenants can actually use the UI to create the Kubernetes cluster. So the workflow is really easy now for the tenants that they can just open the VCT UI, click on a menu, and the menu just allows you to create the Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, and that was uh, new in 4.0, removed a lot of the CLI and configuration that you had to do at the back end. Um, so it's now all nice and contained in this UI plugin. Exactly, exactly. And I know so, the high availability is something that's been requested for quite some time. So that's also a bit of a game changer. Yes, it is. And and we will also touch upon the high availability that how does CAC actually does uh, high availability um, in, a, in a bit. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at this CAC architecture on a high level. The, this is this this is how the CAC architecture looks like. This the CAC server will be deployed in its own provider managed solutions org, and we will we'll need to have a connectivity with the vCloud director only. It doesn't require an internet connectivity at this point. Basically, the idea is to deploy CAC 4 v app, which interacts with the VCD APIs to provide the capability to the tenants to create the TKG clusters. Now, cloud provider, uh, cloud provider will provide the underlying networking, load balancing requirements. It could be dedicated or shared model across the tenants, while every tenant is responsible to create their own TKG cluster. And this is important because um, now with CSE 4.0, you can only use NSX T and NSX Advanced Load Balancer. So this is really forcing that migration from you know the legacy NSX V to T to take advantage of this. Exactly, and and you know with CSE four you get the L four RV load balancer right there and there for for you. So the ingress services is available right in front as soon as the cluster gets created. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, and you know I think that's included as well in the, the Flex Core, uh, yes. that basic load balancing functionality. So. This is a you know configuration out box of the entire cluster and the networking and load balancing with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. So from here, uh, now let's take a look at the deployment uh, from the provider point of view. It's really easy. The one of the most important prerequisite for the deployment is to configure VCD KE config. But what is VCD KE config? So VCD KE config is uh, is VCD Kubernetes engine configuration. It is a CSE four configuration. It is an RDE processing layer, and RDE is like runtime defined entity processing layer on top of CSE, which takes in the user inputs. It processes this, processes the inputs to a particular format, which can be read by CSE, and then it allows or it helps CSE to create Kubernetes clusters using the specification specified in the config file over here. Now, the beauty of this config file is it, it is stored in one central location and it is persisted in the VCT database, which is pulled by the CSE. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so the, for the providers, they can now just go ahead, download the OVA and install the OVA as a V app, and they can have multiple V apps running over here. So that config file, um, is that going to have kind of new um, attributes each, for each version of uh, CSE that comes out? Um, is it something that gets upgraded or is it something that's going to be overwritten every time? And so it can be upgraded. Uh, it won't be over. It can be upgraded with new fields, but uh, it it is not going to be completely overwritten. Okay, cool. Yeah, and the and you know 
now that we have looked into how the provider is going to deploy the CAC4 V app, the most one of the most important aspect of CAC4 is uh, it can be configured to in multiple V apps and it can run concurrently. Now, so in can since it can run concurrently, what it means is if I am the cluster admin and I want to request creating a Kubernetes cluster, then as you can see over here, this request to create a Kubernetes cluster will will convert into an RDE specification, runtime defined specification, which will be pulled by any of the V apps. And then any V app taking this RDE specification will then help in creating the Kubernetes cluster out here. So what it means is that I have multiple V apps running. It is highly available and it can pull the RDE specification at the same time. So at any particular point of time, if this V app dies, then there is a steel heartbeat timeout, which is attached to this RDE specification. And as soon as that timeout passes, then the V app, the other V apps, which are actually running, looks into the specification and says, hey, this specification has not really been picked by the others, or maybe something happened to the other V app, which picked this specification. Let me pull this specification and I'll process this specification and create the Kubernetes cluster for you. So a bit like uh, Kubernetes tries to maintain its operational state automatically, we're doing the same thing here at the V app level. Exactly, maintaining the desired state to from the current state to the desired state, right? So, right. so the reconciliatory loop in CAC4 keeps running just so as to make sure that there is no interruption. And those, those V apps, are they defined in the config for the cluster create RDE or are they something that needs needs to be set up prior to that? Yeah, the, uh, this this needs to be set up prior to the configuration. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's just a VAP with resources available and you're configuring into it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So fr from now looking into how CAC4 is designed, CAC4 is designed, it is a completely stateless uh, uh, VAP. All of the states is configured or configured in the VCTKE config, which is stored in the VCT database. Now, when VCT backs up the state of CAC4 configuration, it gets backed up as a part of regular backup. And, and just in case when VCT restores the state, CAC4 configuration and state is, are restored as well. So that VCTKE config, which you saw in a couple of slides before, is really, really important. Mm, yeah. Makes sense? Okay. So let's jump right in, into the cluster components. Now, looking into the cluster components, I'll, let's look into the cluster components from this CAC4 component diagram. So let's consider that uh, there is a UI user, an API user requesting to create a Kubernetes cluster. Now, as a side effect of the creation of this cluster request, the RD and RDE with the cluster specification embedded in it will be created in the cloud director. Now, CSE server's primary responsibility is to create the clusters in the tenant organization and monitor such RDEs with cluster specifications. Mm -hmm. So it's two things, right? So basically it monitors these RDEs with cluster specifications, and then it creates the clusters in the tenant organization. So in the end, the TKG clusters actually looks like this. It has two components, projector and cap VCD, which helps in managing the life cycle of the cluster further. So CAC server is responsible to create and delete, while these two components over here are responsible to update and upgrade or resize. And some of the other components that you see over here in yellow are responsible to enhance the cluster further. For example, CPI for VCD is responsible for letting end users deploy ingress services. CSI for VCT is responsible to create stateful sets with persistent volumes. CNI is responsible for cluster networking, while the core packages, the Tanzu core packages are for add-ons with the TKG cluster. So in a nutshell, CSC server relies heavily on these components to manage the life cycle of the clusters. And are those within the, so we looked at the tenant org, <coughs> excuse me, earlier on, mm -hmm. and we had three V apps in there. Are these contained externally to those as another um, instance, like a control instance? 
So as you can see, that the tenant org that you saw, which had those CAC VAPs, that was actually a provider created solution org. So right. going back into the architecture, there was a solution org on the top right where uh, we have the CSE server running. It's a provider created solution org where the CSE server is running. Got it. Okay. Right. 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 So, uh, yeah. So it's not really tenant, but it's just, it's really a provider created org where the CSE server is separately running. And not that it has to be, but I think undoubtedly we're going to get the question, can that pro provider org be in a high availability configuration as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's why you can see that the CAC, multiple CAC OVA instances are, are created over here, which is running on that particular provider created solutions org. Okay, and you get one OVA instance per tenant. You get one OVA, not necessarily. You can okay. have like all of these, uh, for all of these, the multiple instances that you can see over here, it can actually process the request from any tenant. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's giving it the high availability aspect. E exactly, right. exactly, yes, yeah. Cool. So, so, so now let's take a look into CAP VCD. So the two important components is projector and CAP VCD. Now, what is CAP VCD? The core engine, which is sitting behind CSE4 is CAP VCD. All of the heavy lifting of cluster creation and lifecycle management is done by CAP VCD. So think of CSE4 as a wrapper around it to create Kubernetes clusters. So cluster API, is a Kubernetes 6 project, which simplifies the cluster lifecycle management process. And CAP VCD is the cluster API infrastructure provider for our platform, which is Cloud Director, mm -hmm. in a way. So all of the features that you see, which is listed here, like multi-control plane, front-end by L4 RV, load balancer, zero downtime upgrades, are being enabled by CAP VCD. And also one of the most powerful features provided by CAP VCD is the continuous reconciliation of the clusters. Mm -hmm. What it means is that if a user specifies they need a cluster with one control plane and three worker nodes, and while creating the second worker node, there was some problem. What that really means is that the cluster creation operation is partially interrupted. And in case when the issue is fixed, then CAP VCD will continuously try to bring the cluster to the desired state from the current state. And when these issues are fixed, the cluster creation will be successful with the second worker note as well. So that is one of the powerful features brought by CAP VCD. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so uh, what other features that CAP VCD provides is it provides the support for scaling up and scaling down of the nodes. It also has the ability to to create now multiple pool of workers of different shapes and sizes. So for example, in the UI, while creating the Kubernetes cluster, you get the ability to create different pool of nodes. So, uh, so you can say, I want a TKG medium pool of nodes, or I want a TKG large pool of nodes. So, or I want a GPU activated pool of nodes because I want to run machine learning workloads. Mm -hmm. So those are the support which has been, uh, which has, uh, those are the support and the features that are provided by CAPCD. That's really nice actually, because the GPU support is um, via NVIDIA for our um, support of uh, GPU hardware. And NVIDIA, um, obviously you've got the, the memory on the GPU card, which is critically important, but the way that it's metered by usage meter is all of the memory of that GPU card is then metered. It's not, um, you know, it's not uh, on a usage basis, the whole thing. So you actually want that GPU card to be on a separate host um, right. dedicated to AI processing or GPU processing. Um, and this way, then you can specify where you want that that um, worker node to be, and you, it will maintain that continuity. So that's um, you don't want that obviously moving off that host. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, and, you know, since th this is a list of features which is provided by CAP VCD, let's take a look into a layman terms, what it means. So let's consider that we have a Kubernetes cluster and we install CAP VCD on top of it. 
Now, once we install Cap VCT on top of it, it means that the cluster now has new capabilities. User can come in and say, "Hey, I want to cut. Uh, I want a cluster with a particular sizing policy, and now it can create an another cluster." From cluster API point of view, the Kubernetes cluster, this Kubernetes cluster, is now called management clusters, and it can deploy further children clusters, as mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. So functionality wise, these two clusters are just regular Kubernetes clusters. And the naming convention here is to differentiate the parent with the child. So the children clusters are called the workflow clusters and the parent clusters are called management clusters. Mm -hmm. That is cluster API or CAP VCD in a nutshell. So it can go ahead and create further workload clusters. But if you if you see we are saying CSC4 leverages it. So CSC4 primary responsibility is to create the clusters. Now we are saying that with, with cluster API, we need to have an existing cluster to create workload clusters. Mm -hmm. Then how does CSC4 solve this problem? Because, because we think about self-managing clusters, right? So it's a chicken and egg problem. The way CSC4 solves this problem is CSC4 creates a lightweight bootstrap cluster by using something called as kind and installs CAP VCT on top of it. And because CAP VCT is present on this lightweight bootstrap cluster, CSC4 sends the specification to the Kubernetes cluster and it creates a full blown production grade, highly available multi control plane workload cluster with rich feature set. And this workload cluster is what we are calling TKG cluster that gets delivered to the tenant. The point to note here is CSE4 does something extra here. It also equips this workload cluster to be able to manage itself. It makes it self-managing so that any resize and upgrade required for the cluster is directly performed on the cluster. So it doesn't need the parent anymore and it deletes the parent for good. So that's what CAP VCT is. So essentially the workload cluster becomes the management cluster. You, you can say that, yes. The new one. <laughs> you, can, you can say that, yes. <laughs> okay, so and then it deletes the bootstrap cluster, but then from that point on, all um, actions that are requested are requested directly to the, the new management cluster or the workload cluster. Or, or the workload cluster. So let's look into the uh, the cluster creation workflow. So let's take, take, take an example of this uh, cloud provider. We have the 10 in Pepsi and we have it in Coke and we have a CSE4 which is installed up on the provider solutions org and then there is a Pepsi user. Now, this Pepsi user says, I want to create, a, and, and I want a cluster. So basically, since this user is requesting for the cluster, the first thing CAC4 does is it creates a bootstrap cluster and it creates the workload cluster from it. So it tells the bootstrap cluster to create the workload cluster because CAP VCD is installed in it. And once it is done, it moves the certain records from here to there to make it self-managing. And now this workload cluster is self-managing and you can see that the parent and child is, is broken. So we no longer need this to manage this cluster anymore. Resize and upgrade can be done directly on the cluster. So CAC4 deletes this cluster and this becomes the self-managing cluster in its own. At this point, the Pepsi user can manage their own cluster. So there is no intermediate layer. There is no management cluster per se, and there is no overhead of another person coming in and administrating the cluster. So, so, we, so there, is no, there is no question of somebody coming in and saying, hey, you have one management cluster, and now you, how are you going to manage 10,000 workload clusters? How can you scale? How would it work? So those questions are, uh, are out now. And now, so with this, Kubernetes as a service at this point is really becomes a, a thin wrapper called as CSE. 4.0. It is extremely distributed. So all other 
cluster users can come and create their own clusters in the same way and uh, each cluster is managing its own request in okay. in a, yeah yeah and 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 you know the the final product of the tkg cluster once it gets created you have the l4 load balancer created you have the control plane and the worker nodes created and you have all of these apps which is deployed on the cluster which is cpi csi cni cap vct projector and tkg core packages what i'm, I'm struggling with the projector kind of name what, what's what's the difference there between the cap vcd bootstrap and cap vct projector very nice, very, very great question. So <laughs> let's look into projector now then. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> following that the was, flow really that well here. Exactly, <laughs> exactly going into the same flow. So, so no, you know, uh, now, now that you have seen projector and cap ECT and how the self-managing cluster gets created, let's look into the, the workflow of upgrade and resize. We say that CSC, when we create a Kubernetes cluster, it is a self-managing Kubernetes cluster. So once the TKG cluster gets created, these two components are pre-installed on it. Now at this point, let's say if the user wants to resize this cluster from three to five worker nodes, and they would then run through the VCT UI workflow. And as a result, the UI is going to update the cluster API specification in the CAP ECD cluster RDE, mm -hmm. and it changes the worker count to five. So the projector which is sitting inside uh, the cluster, what it is doing, it, its main responsibility is to watch this object. So, and, and in fact, any changes in this object. So it sees that, hey, there is some modification over here. It pulls the desired state and notifies CAP VCD to bring the cluster to the desired state. And from there on, CAP VCD takes over and then CAP VCD then creates the two new worker nodes. And while these two new worker nodes are getting created, CAP VCD continuously updates the status of these two worker nodes back to the RDE, which is propagated to the UI so that the entire status can be seen in the VCT UI as well. So, so you know, the work of projector over here is it is continuously monitoring the cluster specification RDE over here so that it can maintain the desired state from the current state. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I understand now. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. So it is, uh, it, um, it is a Kubernetes operator which sits inside each workload cluster. As I said, the main responsibility is to monitor the changes, to bring the cluster to the desired state so that it can handle the resize and the upgrade of the cluster. Um, any changes to the current state are asynchronously propagated to the stack or uh, to the UI in the real time as well. So this is how we are able to see that the entire LCM of the cluster can be done by the tenant themselves right. using yeah. using the help of projector and cap VCT. Now, um, so cap VCT is obviously a very um, comprehensive um, capability that CSC is kind of relying on here to deliver the Kubernetes infrastructure that the tenant wants. Um, for providers who have existing clusters on CSC 3, this is not a, a, an, an upgrade. This is a, a new deployment um, yeah. for CAP VCD. Is there a, a capability then to kind of migrate the specifications that exist in CSC 3 into the RDE for CSC 4? There are approaches. I would say that there are approaches. Uh, so if there is a cluster which has been created using CAC 3.1 and there is a new cluster which has been created using CAC 4.0 and if the apps are running on the CAC 4.0 CSC 3.1, then there are approaches to migrate those apps from there to the new cluster. Because as as you know, the, the CSC 4 and CSC 3.1 can sit side by side and functional, uh, but there is we can't really do the exact upgrade, but we can actually, there are approaches to migrate from one to other. For example, in, the, in a sense, you can take the backup of the cluster developed in CSA 3.1, and then you can try to restore that particular backup into CSA 4. The, and, and in that also, there are further 
pros and cons on how you are looking at how the cluster has been created. Are you using the stateful sets? Are you using the persistent volumes? What sort of persistent volumes are you using? So, so in that also, you will start have to think, can we use Valero? Can we use uh, Restic? Can we use Copia? So there are more plugins which are available. So accordingly, so there are different approaches we using which we can actually uh, move the state from the CSE 3.1 cluster to CSE 4 cluster. Okay, so yeah, um, I mean, the bulletproof way would be to create the new clusters using CSE4 and then move the applications over. Exactly. Um, that would be the preferred way. And then you're getting all of the, the benefits without having to kind of work out what's missing or, or um, where there isn't, a, you know, a map, a, an exact map between, you know, what's in CSE3.0, TKG potentially packages and 4.0 packages as well. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and that's obviously quite a bit of legwork for providers. Now, going forward, we want to avoid as much kind of legwork in terms of migrations and upgrades as, as possible. Does CAP VCD, uh, obviously you, you're giving control of the, the cluster lifecycle management to the, uh, the tenant. Mm -hmm. But if uh, in the later version of CSC, so we go from 4.0 to 4.1, for example, Mm -hmm. Is that migration for the service provider going to be smoother than going from three to four, which is a whole new architecture? Exactly, exactly. So from all of the new uh, upgrades, which are going to come for CSE 4, so consider CSE 4.1 comes up, then it's only an upgrade and a seamless upgrade. In a rolling upgrade fashion, there won't be any downtime for the service providers. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, even though if they have to install the new OVA, if they do it in a rolling upgrade fashion, there will not be any downtime. And and mind you that if there are a cluster creation request from the tenant perspective, which comes in at that particular point of time, there might be an intermittent delay, but that specification of the RDE is sitting in the VCD database. So once yeah. the new V app comes into picture of for CSE4, it will actually pull that and create the cluster. Yeah. So, so it will be seamless. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I uh, just wanted to also talk about uh, and and sorry, ah, uh, one second. I also wanted to talk about the Tanzu packages available in TKG cluster. You asked the question in each, uh, when mm -hmm. we started the. Uh, uh, when we started the session about TKG, these are the core packages that TKG has, uh, which is bundled within TKG and it comes out of the box. And these are the packages that you can see a user can go ahead and install based on their convenience and their use cases that they may require. So for example, if they want to stream the cluster logs to a collector which can be which can be splunk which can be v realized log inside cloud can be tons of observability or aria uh, applications for operations um you can install fluent bit then if we need an l7 load balancer we can install contour if we need to do backup and restore then valero can help here and in the same way for authentication benefit comes into the picture if we require the private registry then harbor comes into the picture and for promet for cluster observability prometheus and grafana comes into the picture so these are all user managed packages that can be installed based on the use cases of the tenant and uh, the users so these are packages that are deployed as part of the ova with tkg um but they are not installed into the cluster until the the developer kind of decides they want to use that correct so uh just to correct there is that these are all core packages which are installed as a part of tkg image so okay. the tkg image is being uploaded into the catalog of the provider and the provider actually publishes that image to the tenants and the tenants can then use those images to create the cluster out of it okay got it yeah 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 so in a in a nutshell uh, you know to sum it up uh, we talked about the cluster api cluster api is a kubernetes sub project focused on providing declarative apis and tooling to simplify provisioning upgrading and operating multiple kubernetes clusters while cap vct it is an implementation 
it is the kubernetes cluster api implementation specially designed for cloud director which helps in life cycle management of pkg on cloud director rde projector as you saw it is responsible for detecting the changes in the rde specification and notifying capacity of the desired state cpi is responsible for ingress services of the application csi is responsible for deploying persistent volumes for stateful applications and vcd ke which is the vcd kubernetes engine it is the rde processing layer on top of vcd which takes the user inputs and uh, uh, to a format that can be managed by cap vcd csi and, CP and cpi uh, which helps in creating the kubernetes clusters yeah okay and, and so cap vcd is really if you like a wrapper for a cluster api would that be a right way of thinking about it yes exactly yep perfect and previous to 4.0 we obviously didn't have cap vcd but cluster api was there wasn't it no Okay. In, 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 even in CSE 3.1, we didn't have a uh, cluster API. So it's it's a major it's, step forward then. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. I, I think you've, um, I mean, I always, I knew about CAP VCD, but only at a very, very high level conceptual level that it was there in CSE 4 and it was important. <laughs> it's great to see how this actually fits together now. And hopefully this will provide a great explanation to our cloud providers who are looking at deploying um, Kubernetes cluster services via VCD um, using CSC4. I just want, so, you know, I, the reason why I want pinged you that day was I was talking to a, MEA, a partner in EMEA and uh, they looked into, and in fact, they had a customer. So they looked into this self-managing cluster. They were so thrilled. They were like, this is exactly what we want. We don't want anything from the cluster point of view to be managed by the provider. And mm -hmm. if we are able to upgrade and resize, then um, then then we are we are thrilled. We want to use it as soon as it is available for us. So <laughs> so that was a good story. And then um, you know the cluster API actually brings the APIs. So in a in a way we can do the automation on top of the cluster api so we can actually have our pipelines use the cluster specification to create the clusters delete the cluster in a sense so cluster api actually brings the automation on the table as well yeah yeah and and that's what kind of people are used to with kubernetes clusters is the cluster api right yeah it's one of yeah. the kind of the big value adds is maintaining that state and um, providing that uh, lifecycle management. So this is really cool to see VCD kind of providing that wrapper around it, or CSE providing that wrapper around it in the CAP VCD uh, deployment. Uh, yeah, great to know from the customer example as well. I know lots of customers have been asking, or partners, sorry, have been asking for this. So it's fantastic. Yeah, to see it. it's yeah there are a lot of them. There are quite a few bit that I've been talking to. They are, they seem to be excited, but uh, I mean, not fairly also, they have to do some legwork from CSE 3.1 to CSE 4 because yeah. they both are architecturally different. They can sit on the both of sides. So that's the legwork that they will have to do. But once they are into CSE 4, then it will be really seamless for them. And they've got all the, the you know, the new value add, not only giving the tenant control, but, you know, things like NSX advanced load balancing and providing load balancing exactly. to the Kubernetes yeah. cluster that wasn't there before. Yeah, um, yeah, this is yeah, this is a kind of significant uh, move forward from you know the value proposition the provider can have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate you like providing us with all of the detail around Cap VCD and a great explanation how the architecture works in CSE four. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on Feature Fridays. No worries. Cheers. Bye.